give thanks and praise to the mystic laws of the universe and its protective functions and forces in nature that guide our thoughts and our part in our ways that are lawful, correct, and positive. We do give thanks and praise. I must say, as we progress, moving forward within this new era, I present our enlightenment again, or enlightenment. Rise up now. So attention, Jamaica Executive Branch, Police Service Commission. Ad hominem fallacy. Ad hominem fallacy is a group of argumentation strategies that focus on the person making an argument rather than their viewpoint. This involves an attack on any aspect of the opponent's personality, like their intelligence, reputation, or group affiliations. Or association. So, with that being said, just ignore I as the presenter or as the messenger. You can totally ignore I. I'm irrelevant. But pay attention to the viewpoint or or point of view, you know what I mean? So, I as the man we are bring forward or share this information is irrelevant. So the moment any attack is against the man, then we know say it's fallacious, fallacy. Why? because it's a distraction to divert the attention from the context of that body of information, from the substance. So again, as the presenter or the messenger, I'm irrelevant. Let's scrutinize the information that is being presented. I must say, complete gratitude to my subscribers. Truly, complete gratitude. A uh, man like I is hard to really deal with. I know that. Yeah, from my child, I know that. So he's not one of them man that were, you know, easily deal with. And I got always try to, you know, ascertain answers, especially when I'm not clear. I remember my mom would say she thought I would be some kind of engineer to whom like to me used to as a child like to take apart all kind of things want to see how it worked. Yeah. So it's the same thing with you know life itself. We don't have a problem of 
scrutinize whatever information is presented. And for honorable clarification, you know, we present such information for rebuttal. Uh, when it, once you can rebut the information, then we truly can learn or we can truly have an informed discussion. So I, going forward, will be mindful, you know, of the attack or, you know, the attention or my pay to the presenters or the messengers and focus more on the information. If the information does not resonate, then I won't be able to relate. And again, speaking from this personal perspective, I have a man, have a right to decide their own destiny and have a right, that very equal right to their own opinions. Every man have that. So we do say complete gratitude again to all my subscribers. Yeah, I'm truly appreciative. I may have about a thousand subscribers, you know, but for some reason I can never get a hundred views. Probably not even within a week or a month. Yeah, highly irregular, but not surprising. However, again, we'll move forward progressively within this new era. Not necessarily new year per se, uh, the time has changed a few years ago. So people who are waiting for see some kind of change might just miss it. So due diligence and patience is where we are trying to, you know, emphasize. Yeah, irrespective of what is being done or said, we will truly try to exercise due diligence and patience and not quick for really you know attack or be too defensive out there so we have to choose to adjust or change or you know remain the same but with true growth, yeah, we should say true change, yeah, however minute it may be, but it's always a starting point. Now, what's the rule of law is defined in the Encyclopedia Britannica as the mechanism, process, institution, practice, or norm that supports the equality of all citizens, and then we have the people before the law. So now, because we know a citizen in you know, this modern era has been, you know, sir, used as an instrument or as a term of subjugation so we have to be specific when we are talking about citizen this is why we said the people car now we have to make the corrections in order to avoid the errors or the mistakes so we say 
rule of law is a mechanism, process, institution, practice, or norm that supports the equality of all the people before the law. It also secures a non-arbitrary form of government and more generally prevents the arbitrary use of force by the governing body politic. No. When we use the term rule of law, you know, the modern age, people say all kinds of things, but we like forgot to, you know, what is basically first or truest, you know. So we can just take with some body politic or with some politician by way of legislation a present and say this is it we can never do that rule of law is defined as a mechanism process institution practice or norm that supports the equality of all people before the law. It also secures a non-arbitrary form of government. So what we have in place now where people are telling us that they are compel you to do this and compel you to do that and you should subject yourself to the police. You know, all of these things are separate and apart from a non-arbitrary form of government. It goes on to say, and more generally, rule of law prevents the arbitrary use of force or power. They use power, but, you know, with, when you have power, force is irrelevant because power represents truth. Force is something else, and that is from our point of view, our viewpoint, our perspective. So it's a rule of law should generally prevent the arbitrary use of force by the governing body politic or the executive branch of government. You know what I mean? I go on to say, break down the definition of a citizen. A citizen is a person who, by place of birth, nationality of one or both parents, that would be descendancy, or naturalization, that means they come from anywhere and become a citizen of that country, country usually represent a corporation type of thing, is granted, granted mean given full rights and responsibilities as a member of a nation or optional, not and, meaning joined in together, or political community. Now, People have problem with the term citizen, and it is understandable because, again, word wizardry has deceived many, put it that way. So people really have problem, you know, with this word citizen. However, even in this very definition, if you look at the, the, the information according to us from our perspective, it's a citizen is a person. This is from an ordinary standpoint. Who by place of birth, meaning a birth, nationality of one or both parents, ancestry, or naturalization through their federal system is given full rights. So who I give, who I grant this? You know what I mean? Okay. 
and responsibilities as a member of a nation, a nation is like the island nation of Jamaica, or a political community. Political community is like where the government of Jamaica as a body politic. So that's two class of citizen. That's why in our passport that I've presented out there, that old passport from 1989, I've demonstrated where as a so-called Jamaican, you have dual citizenship naturally by birth. You're a British Commonwealth citizen and a Jamaican citizen. So that's where them join it. But like I, who have this kind of information and knowledge, choose to renounce it, my Jamaican citizenship. I don't need permission for that. And as such, it would, I would be considered a citizen of the island of Jamaica or a national of the island of Jamaica. You get me? Or the island nation of Jamaica. And that's why they would say, oh, that's the Commonwealth citizenship. Now, if that's the case, we still won't have any issue. Why? Because as such, the government of Jamaica have no jurisdiction here, period. And then we can challenge that British Commonwealth. I remember, you know, this is an American island nation because we are connected continentally to the American continent. That's where the connection would be. We, are, we have no connection to Britain. You know what I mean? No connection landmass wise as we can say now in modern time to the eastern hemisphere this is why there is a separate waterway it's separated by that waterway so again you know People will always have issue with the word citizen, but you know, I'm not going to take issue with that word. Because I, as man, is subject only to the most high creator of I, as man. It's that simple. Now, we said non arbitrary form of government. Arbitrariness is typical of various forms of despotism, absolutism, authoritarianism, and totalitarianism. Despotic government includes even highly institutionalized form of rules in which the entity or actor at the apex of the power structure, such as a king, a junta, or a party committee, can act without the constraint of law when it wishes to do so. It goes on to say, ideas about the rule of law have been central to political and legal thoughts since at least the 4th century BCE when Aristotle distinguished the rule of law from that of any individual. In the 18th century, the French political philosopher Montesquieu elaborate, elaborated a doctrine of the rule of law that contrasted the legitimate authority of monarchs with the caprice or volatility of despots 
and has since profoundly influenced Western liberal thoughts. Now we'll go on to say, equality is a custom of courts outside the common law or coded law. Equity provide remedies in situation in which precedent or statutory law might not apply or be equitable. By the early years of the 14th century, the petitions were going directly to the chancellor by way of the middle to the chancellor and by the middle of that century the chan the court of chancery was recognized as a new and distinct court these development results in the fashioning of the chancellor the fashioning by the chancellor of new equity or equitable remedies of which the following are representative let me go back over this by the early years of the 14th century the petitions were going directly to the chancellor and by the middle of that century the court of chancery was recognized as a new and distinct court these development resulted in the fashioning by the chancellor of a new equitable or of new equitable remedies of which the following are representative. So the equitable rem remedies are these. Specific performance of contract, whereby the victim of a breach might compel the exact performance promise if damage would be a poor substitute. As in contrast, as in contract to sell land and unique shuttles. People can look up shuttles. As, as in contrast to sell unique shuttles or land. So once and once can look up that. B, we say enforcement of trust. We are one who had been given title to property to manage it for another was required to fulfill his fiduciary obligations. So when you talk about title to property, the bird certificate represents title to property, and it I come out of the RGB area, so them have that property are managed as fiduciary trustees. You understand? And we as money can choose to be the beneficiary title holder you get me or you make a claim as owner but in any way them always need your consent to gain access to that sophisticated sophisticated financial instrument which is that bird registration form yeah so that represent the public trust what i must say that is the debtor that is the surety that is the insurance now we've got to see it's an injunction to prevent threatened or continuing wrong such as destruction of the sovereigns invaluable property and or possessions and when we say sovereign we are talking about the man woman and child number four is a restitution of benefits wrongfully acquired by compulsory surrender of the ill-gotten gains by underwriting the sovereign's birth bond to prevent unjust enrichment. This is when I have, a, I have my own surety bond of 100,000 on the table. And when I ask for the information request, 
for acts to identify these parties and present their insurance, their bond. You know what I mean? And its location. And all we get is a police witness statement which is uncertified. You understand? With a little constable, not the senior sergeant of police taking responsibility for his actions. But he's hiding behind a constable. Interesting. So when we saw put up a hundred thousand bond, this is why we said the court clerk who are underwrite the bond is committing fraud right there. Especially when you are present information where we are present out here and we are placing information upon the court accordingly. So them now gonna know what to do. The only thing them can do is dismiss this case and present compensation for this wrong. Yeah. Now it's a correction and or cancellation of a written instrument for mistake and misrepresentation. This is why I'm say. I can some voters registration contract return their identification card just like how I renounce it my citizenship of Jamaica removing from the corporate construct or from the political community the political side and remain on the national or the island nation opposed to the government political association and we have these things on the public record as certification of fact stand up in any court as the highest evidence form unrebuttable. This is why the mother of issue with a man such as I. This is why the mother chose to play games, but for how long? Now we say equity of redemption, which enable a defaulting mortgagor. To reclaim his land if he tender principal and interest within a reasonable time after forfeiture and before foreclosure. Such new equitable remedies contrasted with the narrow rigidity of common law remedies. So what does I go on push to? By the middle of the 14th century, the equity administered by the court of chancery had become a recognized part of the law of the land meaning constitution equity gave justice according to the law of the land the constitution rather than the executive justice finally by the judicator act of 1873 the competitive separate law and equity courts with their attendant delays, expense, and injustices were abolished and their work combined in a single departmentalized Supreme Court of Judicator. You hear that? All that work was combined in a single departmentalized Supreme Court of Judicator. So irrespective of when I'm call it inferior court. It is administered by the court administrative division 
which is governed and run by the Supreme Court of Judicator. Yeah, man. So the very same information are going at the inferior court, or the very same information going at the superior court, only reverse. You are no longer the defendant. Now you are the plaintiff. You get me? And the police constable and the senior sergeant and their cohorts now become the defendants. So this is how this game is played. <laughs> yeah, man. So when I say the creation or the origin of the Supreme Court of Judicator, it's from the Court of Chancery. Uh, we still uh, come from the British line of things. When I saw Americanized, like all them change it up, even though it's one and the same. Now we said trespass is a voluntary infringement, abridgment, and abrogation of the sovereign's absolute right, secured, not granted, by the Constitution as amended by assent. 7 to the 8 April 2011, recognized as the supreme law of the land now called Jamaica. So when you talk about law, be specific. Yeah. The law that is there is called the Constitution and there's a chapter 3 which facilitate the Bill of Rights, yeah, it's called the Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedom. Charter is the very same thing as saying contract, the contract of fundamental rights and freedom. And all these agents take an oath, whether it's judicially or administratively, they are all bonded by oath to this supreme law of the land, to the Constitution. Everything else is a charade. It doesn't apply. Clarity. Yeah. We're going to say Wrongful arrest and false imprisonment are the unlawful restraint by the police upon the physical freedom of the sovereign. And the word false used here is synonymous with unlawful. It is of the utmost importance to remember that all lawful acts are maintained by the supreme law of the land, i.e., the Constitution as amended by assent again, 7 to the 8th, April 2011. Chapter 3. Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedoms. We said any wrongful exercise of force expressed or implied threat of force by which the sovereign is deprived of his freedom and is then compelled to remain where he does not wish to be or go where he does not wish to go is in fact imprisonment. False imprisonment is the unlawful arrest or detention of the sovereign without warrant or by an illegal warrant or a warrant illegally executed. Any restraint, however slight, upon the sovereign's freedom to come and go as he please constitutes an arrest. So any restraint is an arrest. Tort is a civil wrong that causes a claimant to suffer loss or harm resulting in legal liability
for the police that causes the suffering. So it is a civil wrong that causes a sovereign to suffer loss or harm resulting in legal liability for the police who commit the tortuous act. A tort or wrong a false imprisonment occurred the instant the sovereign is restrained. The instant the sovereign is restrained in the exercise of their freedom, there is no unreasonable length of time for a restraint before the tort can be claimed. That means if it's only one minute, yeah, man. False imprisonment at common law and elsewhere consists in the unlawful detention of the sovereign any time whereby he, the sovereign, is deprived of his personal freedom and liberties. A. Where two people are traveling in a car and stopped by police, the party not driving, I'll leave that, the party, not driving is put in the police car and told to wait. The police doing so is guilty of false imprisonment. Even though the person was in the police car for less than a minute, it was an arrest. As the police had no authority to confine that person in the car. Even where police stop a moving vehicle for a brief detention, it is sufficient to constitute an arrest. Where one is told to stay in their car by the police, though it be for only 10 seconds, it is an arrest. Time duration is not a factor in making an arrest. False imprisonment is defined as an act which directly or indirectly is a legal cause of confinement of the sovereign within boundaries fixed by the police as actors for any time, no matter how short in duration, make the police as actor liable to the other. Yeah. Liable to the sovereign. Liable to the sovereign. Clarity. When one is approached by the police and questioned about his identity and action, this is only an accosting, not an arrest. So we have to have that distinction and clarity. So when we move forward, we can be law abiding, you know? So we know what law is and which law applies to us and what color of law doesn't. <laughs> damages and liability. The police who choose to interfere with the sovereign's absolute right, the freedom of movement and other liberties have done so at their own peril. The police that choose to do so without lawful authority shall be sued for violation 
of US $1 million no trespass notice that was given, initiating additional estate fee schedule. This is pertaining to the police then. So as we go along, you know, we structure the thing accordingly. It thus is a very serious thing for the police that choose to deprive the sovereign of his absolute rights. Yeah. Not granted or gifted or given. Yeah, man. It's divine. It's absolute. False imprisonment is a wrong suffered by the sovereign who is entitled to receive remedy for damages. False imprisonment was an indictable offense at common law and relief by the aggrieved sovereign was obtained by an action for trespass with force and arms. The wrongful arrest of the sovereign without a warrant or due process of law entitled the sovereign to compensation for damages sustained by reason of the wrongful arrest and unlawful imprisonment. The general rule of damages in cases of false imprisonment is that the police causing the wrongful arrest and imprisonment is liable for all the natural and probable consequences thereof. The sovereign is entitled to recover damages for what the police wrongfully did. The police unlawfully interference with or injury to the freedom of the sovereign is a violation of the sovereign's natural inherent dignity and absolute right, which damages result as a legal consequence. Injunction may now be obtained against the police further threatening injury to interests of personality such as civil, civil liberties, priv privacy, privacy, reputation, and social relation or societal relation. The present enabling legislation has immensely increased the resort to injunction by government agencies to prevent violation of regulatory statutes, notwithstanding criminal penalties. Modern equity gains much assistance from legislation. The old notion that equity protects all property rights has been virtually abandoned. Now an employee, for example, can be barred from competing with his employee after discharge or resignation. The statutes has facilitated specific performance of cooperative marketing contracts and agreements to arbitrate future commercial or labor disputes. Gratitude to all those who choose to secure, protect, and defend us that are poor in spirit and lack the knowledge of it. Thank you. The end. Again, give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks and praise. This thing has a 44 minutes. I guess, uh, you know, went over the little 28, 29 minutes mark. So we do give thanks. Salute, complete gratitude. Rise up now. This is our enlightenment. Gratitude out there.